Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and this is the sixth lecture on the general toxicology and this lecture will be discussing the factors modifying the action of poisons. We uh, when the poisons uh, it enters into the body we expect that it will follow a textbook pattern which we have studied in the book but poisons they normally do not follow the textbook pattern regarding their signs and symptoms as the, it is described in the books. And a particular tox toxic effect may or may not be evident with each case of poisoning. So that means all the actions may not be manifested and one action may be manifested more than the other and the other action may be manifested more. So a classical book picture of all the signs of some symptoms which are written there, they may not appear. And <clears throat> sometimes the victims even show a behavior which is totally unexpected and unpredictable. That is, the poison after entering into some person may show a symptom or uh, the signs which are totally unexpected and uh, a behavior which is not have been described uh, regarding that poison it may appear. So there are certain factors because this happens because of certain modifying factors which change the action of the poison. So regarding the uh, factors which modify the actions of the poison they are quantity and dose. The most important factor the dose of the poison, the quantity of the poison, then the route of administration. So these two factors, they are most important factor regarding the dose and the route of administration through which it has been administered into the body. Then the other factor, factors which are uh, responsible for modification of the actions like the form of the poison in which form it is present, it is in a solid form, liquid form or in gaseous form, then uh, how it acts that depends upon the form of the poison, that is the physical form of the poison or the chemical form of the poison. Then the concentration of the poison, that means after absorption, how much uh, is the value or the concentration of poison in the tissues or in the blood. Then condition of the stomach which is regarding the absorption. Then the age of the person it may also affect metabolism in the body that how it is metabolized, how it is biotransformed into other uh, ingredients in the metabolites. So metabolism in the body, then other minor factors like exercise, occupation and the cumulative, cumulative action of the poisons. We will discuss one by one all these factors, then the tolerance, then idiosyncrasy factor, synergism, so antagonism and allergy. So these are various factors which can affect the uh, outcome of poisoning. So the first factor the quantity and the dose. The higher dose quickly uh, acts and it results in fatal complications. So it is uh, very much expected when the higher the dose amount is uh, much more the toxic limit it will affect with fatal complications. Moderate doses causes acute poisoning, but, but that may not be fatal. Similarly, the low dose may have subclinical effects and sometimes the subclinical doses or the low doses, they get deposited and they may cause chronic poisoning on the repeated exposures. That is low doses given on the repeated time, it may get deposited and the chronic poisoning can occur. Then 
The second factor most important is the route of administration. The rate of absorption is different for different routes of absorption. Same poison may cause different effect if it is administered through different routes. For example, snake venom is harmless if it is ingested orally because we know that the uh, snake poison, they are enzymes which are uh, protein products and the stomach acid or the stomach enzymes will be uh, digesting those. So it will become harmless. But it is fatal if it is injected with the bite or with other uh, injecting uh, like syringe. So it can, uh, it is fatal. So the most poisonous route of uh, poisoning in descending order because we know there are many routes of administration but according to their action in descending order they are inhalational in gaseous form, intravenous route, intramuscular route. So that means the first two the inhalation if the poison is in gaseous form but that inhalation is the most uh, uh, active form, uh, active uh, route and if it is a liquid or uh, in uh, other form the intravenous route is the fastest. Then in descending order will be intramuscular, then the subcutaneous, intradermal route, ingestion that is swallowing. So these were the routes in descending order. Then the form of poison that is physical form and the chemical form of the poison. In physical form of the poison, if it is gaseous or volatile form of poison, they quickly absorb and are rapidly effective when they are inhaled. Whereas liquid forms are more effective than the solids. And some poisonous seeds of plants can pass through the intestine unevenly. That means uh, these seeds are not crushed and uh, they can pass through undigested. But if they are crushed and the reactive material or the ingredient it is exposed to the alimentary canal then it is poisonous. If they are, uh, the seeds are ingested as a whole uncrushed but if they are crushed they can cause fatal results like ratti seeds. When they are crushed and swallowed they are most poisonous. Then regarding the chemical uh, nature or chemical form of the poison it depends upon the solubility or insolubility resulting from the chemical combination. So that means uh, how stable it is, how soluble it is when uh, it is uh, showing the uh, when it is being dissolved in some liquid. For example, chemically pure arsenic or mercury, they are not poisonous or they are because they are insoluble and are not absorbed. But their salts as uh, arsenic having arsenic oxide and the mercury as mercury chloride, they are deadly poisonous. So, the metallic form of these poisons as a whole they are non-poisonous but their sorts they are most poisonous. Now the uh, concentration of poison, this is the next important factor. The concentrated forms of poisons are absorbed more rapidly. Then regarding the condition of the stomach. The presence of food stuff in the stomach acts as diluent. It dilutes various poisons and hence it uh, protects the stomach wall when it is diluted. Dilution also delays the absorption and empty stomach absorb the poison most rapidly. 
this is most marked in case of fatty food in stomach now regarding the age of the individual some poisons are better tolerated in some age groups opium and it its alkaloids are tolerated better by elderly but badly tolerated by the children and the infants because of the developing blood brain barrier and not fully developed drug metabolizing enzymes in children they are fatal now regarding the metabolism in the body mostly the poisons or the drugs they are metabolized in the body that is in the mainly in the liver to make them sometimes less toxic which is then excreted excreted through the kidney but in some cases after metabolism it changes into more toxic compounds and they uh, for example when we talk about the meth methanol poisoning as it forms into formic acid on metabolism and it causes central nervous system depression and ocular effects more powerfully than the methanol itself so the methanol methylated spirit when it is metabolized into formic acid it becomes poisonous now regarding the excretion exercise sorry regarding the exercise during exercise more blood is drawn towards the muscles therefore the action of the alcohol on the cns is slowed down regarding the occupation industrial workers of the pesticides have increased ability to metabolize these drugs because they are working and daily the low dose is being uh, taken up in the body and the body gets uh, used up and so they uh, have increased ability to metabolize these drugs because their uh, liver microsomal enzymes activity and the toxic dose is less than the normal person when they are routinely working daily now regarding the uh, cumulative action of the poison poison which are not excreted readily tend to accumulate in the body and we, when it is given in the repeated doses it gets accumulated and then show its uh, poisonous effects <clears throat> like the preparations of cumulative poison lead may not cause any toxic effect when enters into body in low dose but when such poisons enter over a long period of time they can accumulate and result in chronic toxicity and it may cause harm when their concentration is in different tissue reaches high level due to their cumulative properties so the poisons which gets deposited in the tissues in low doses when they are accumulated to the toxic level they show poisonous effects now the tolerance <clears throat> it means the ability of the body to sustain the use of certain substances without an apparent immediate harm that means the body can sustain it can uh, it may not show any harm it may develop by individuals on long term exposure to a particular poison due to induction in the liver of the metabolizing enzymes now the poison or the drug no longer has the effect that originally it had for example the barbiturate drug the alcohol the tobacco the morphine because the body has the ability to tolerate now the idiosyncrasy idiosyncrasy is basically an abnormal and unpredictable response of an individual to a drug or a chemical so uh, the idiosyncrasy can appear to anyone and 
<clears throat> this is as a result of inherent personal hypersensitivity to, to, to specific agent. This is inherent, this is not acquired. So these person may react adversely to a particular drug though the general population tolerate the drug well. So this is his inherent quality. Now the synergism. This means the cumulative effect of two substances is greater than the sum of their individual actions. That when two drugs are given individually, their action is less. But when they are given simultaneously, their synergic effect is more than the individual action. For example, the barbiturate and alcohol, when administered together, they can affect more harmful effects. Then antagonism. Two substances oppose each other. And this means that the effect of substances is reduced in the presence of another substance like opium and nilorphin. Nilorphin is an antidote of opium. Allergy. An allergy is a reaction by your immune system. Substances that can cause reactions include pollens, food and drugs. And this is acquired. On first ex exposure, the body may not show any response. And during that, body will produce uh, anti, uh, anti effects of that particular chemical. And on the second exposure, it will show allergy. First exposure is usually not harmful because it produces to produce fatal effects on the next exposure or on repeated exposure. The most important factor, I will repeat it again, which modify the outcome of poisoning, they are the quantity and the dose and the route of administration. The rest of the factors, they are though important, but these are two most important factors. Thank you very much. We will continue toxicology in the next lecture.